All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Michael Drake here, Riddle Industries. We got the Merciful Towing 2024 1150 rotator, and we've got the brand new Raptor control system, and we're here to show it to you guys today. We've had three people ask for a video on this. That's how dedicated we are to our viewers. Three people is all it takes. We're gonna make a video. The point of today's video is gonna show you the difference between the new Raptor controls and the old Raptor controls. There's not a lot of differences, just a few things they've upgraded. I give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. It needs some work. The remote has some bugs, but solid, solid unit, okay? It's better than all them stinking joysticks. You joystick people kill me. All right, diving into this thing. You wanna sync up your control panel. It's the same. Still the same. Hit your two buttons on top, like three seconds. Everything syncs up. Using your, um, looking over here on your monitor, it'll pop up and say Control D if you're on the driver's side, Control P on the passenger side, Control, I think it's R or REM for the remote. I don't look at this screen when I'm on the remote. If people will stop texting me, that'd be great. So your functions here, they're all still the same. You still have your boom up, your boom out, your boom in, or your boom, sorry, your boom out, I get down backwards every time, and your boom in. You have your, you twist for your rotation. If you have a roller, you twist here to slide the, to, to roll the carriage. And then um, you have your blue winch in, blue winch out, white winch in, white winch out, winch out. You have your drag winches, drag winches here, auxiliary winches here. This truck is only a five winch, so this orange, it's useless. Moving up here to big change number one. I know a lot of people are not a fan of this. They've switched from the buttons to toggle switches up here. My goodness, I am a popular individual today. Big change number one, they've switched to toggle switches from the original push buttons. So your underlift controls are now toggle switches to sync that up. You'll have fold down and lift up will be lit up and you press those two at the same time. Everything will sync up right away and then you're good to use it. Um, this switch is nobody's home. You have your light up light down and your light back up. So you control your boom light from here. I don't know if the other ones could do that, um, but if not, they can now. Um, so moving on, that's big change number one. Um, E-stop obviously still the same, voltage still the same, diagnostic port all still the same, no big deal there. Moving on, you have your beacon button here on the outside. Beacon, basically you can set that however you want to strobe whatever lights you want and in whatever patterns you want. So, and then you have these buttons are more for controls later on. We'll get to those. You have your home button to take you back to however you have your home screen set up. Of course, your back button will take you back one screen. You have your house lock. Um, and then when your PTO is on, you'll have your PTO light right there. And you can, you can turn off the PTO from back here. You just cannot turn it on unless your truck is an automatic. Um, Settings up here in the top right, we'll start there first. You have user settings. You can configure your light button, configure your DVI settings basically. So if you want to configure this button, you can select which lights you want it to turn on, which lights you want it to not turn on. And uh, if, you're <clears throat> if it's yellow, obviously that's the ones you have selected. If you want to add something different, you hit that and you hit home and she's good to go. Um, so moving back, going back to our settings here. Uh, in our user settings, you can select your DVI, basically just your light bar pattern if you want to change it. Obviously, make sure you hit save and confirm if you do change it. Back one screen, you can change your day brightness, your nighttime brightness. You obviously have your button here that dims everything down for you. And your startup screen. So basically, whatever you want this button to go to when you select home or when you drop the control panel is going to be whatever you select it at. Of course, I like it being on the home screen. Um, when I hit home, I want it to go back to here. Uh, moving from there, you have your switch panel button first, just to make sure here. Uh, we'll go back to system settings. Nobody's home in system settings. You can change your date and time, and obviously that's for, for Miller to run their diagnostics if they need to. Moving into your switch panel, you have all of your switches. This is identical inside the cab too. Um, you got your beacons your upper work lights, your lower work lights, your directional, your all on, your DVI button. For those of you that may not know what DVI is, if you haven't had a newer truck in the last couple years, 
Uh, Miller started adding DVI into all their MMO systems. And what it basically does is it slows down your lights, it lowers the brightness of your lights. So when you got, you know, five, ten trucks on scene or whatever, it gets pretty bright and it dims down all those strobes. So traffic coming by, or maybe you're in a neighborhood and uh, you just don't want your lights, at, you don't need them at full volume to blind, blind people. Um, and down here across the bottom, you have your beacon button, you have your upper work light button, which you can see that turns on all your uppers. Once your uppers are on, you can dim your main boom lights up there and your adjustable boom light. And then you have your lower work lights, which does your toolbox lights, your door handles, your dock lights, your underlift lights, and your lowers back there. Um, turns on your little white underglow accents, all the cool stuff. All right, so uh, turning those back off, we'll move on into our beacon button here. Beacon button, this is where you can control, you can um, kind of control what it does. You can change your change your settings. You can, uh, when you go to change your settings, you put it on demo mode, and it'll basically activate your light bar in whatever pattern it's on. Then you can change it and hit save and confirm if you do want to change it, or you can cancel and return. Also, you can turn on or off your corner markers. Um, basically what that is is the corner four corners of the light bar if you want them on with your parking lights that's what that does traffic advisor you can change the sequence um, of how you want your traffic advisor and you can also turn it on to activate your traffic advisor when you have your turn signals on um, I did that one time probably never gonna do that again uh, going down the road is fixing to get off on an exit I was like man that's so cool to have that back there everybody's gonna know I'm turning and uh, turned it on going to the right and I look at my mirror and everybody behind me is getting over to the right. Decided right there, probably ought to go ahead and turn it off. So, but if you want it on to each their own, that's a you thing, not a me thing. Um, you can uh, select where when you hit your light bar, you're just gonna turn on the front or it's just gonna turn on the rear and you can put it on low power, which basically just dims it down. Um, I'm sure there's, since there's other things in here like incident management, there's probably something else you can do. Um, this truck just doesn't have whatever that is. Back to our home screen, and you can go in, you can read your engine information. The truck's not on, so don't be alarmed about this screen, but you have temperatures, voltage, uh, fuel, RPM, your PTO hours, which seems like it's really high up there. Um, now, moving on, engine info, that's not a screen I use very much. I check it every once in a while. If we've been on scene for a while, just to make sure that the truck's not getting warm or anything like that, which it doesn't, it's new, but I just probably jinx, jinxed myself. Going into our load screen, we have your uh, rotation degree, you have your capacity scale, uh, of course your load, your extension, your capacity, your radius, um, all that. You have your house lock from here and you also have a few other your PSIs and your turret positions and, 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 and all that uh, good stuff. So um, honestly, until we started shooting this video, I never even hit that question mark. So never never raised a question for me. So here's what it is. Uh, you can change your parts align and everything. Like I said, most of this stuff's still relatively the same. Um, and there's a few things that have changed. I think your winch free spool screen is different now. Um, so obviously you still select if you want to confirm whatever free spools you want. This is the big big thing that gets me every time is that's not a push button. So if you want to put if you want a free spool one, you actually have to hit the arrow here and it starts blinking to tell you, but I still try to push that all the time. So once that happens, that'll light up. Your main, your driver's side main winch will switch over to free spool from white being engaged, um, locked in, right? So uh, yellow is free, white's engaged, on the right side will be free, left side will be engaged, and see how it switches back. This is like, I think there should be a better way to set that up, but some engineer figured it out, not me. I couldn't even tell you how they got there, so who am I to judge? Anyway, you still select your confirm all. Once again, hit your arrow. Don't hit here, even though it looks like it should be there. Backing up, back to our home screen, we'll go to winch speed. This is where you can change from turtle to rabbit and slow or fast on your mains and your drag winch. Um, your auxiliary winches are not two speed winches. Um, you can lock and unlock your house lock from here and you can also idle your truck up from here. Um, backing up, 
we'll go back to our home screen. Sometimes if you hit these buttons, if you notice, I, I like hit it and then I move over here. Sometimes the back button doesn't actually take you back or you got to hold it for a second to get it to go. Um, we'll move into our outriggers. Now this is what I believe is probably the biggest difference in the old ones. And I may be wrong on this, but I think this is the biggest, one of the biggest differences is uh, the way your outrigger platform screen is set up. You have a circle level gauge that tells you, um, obviously, whether your truck's level or not. The biggest thing here, and the way I read this wrong all the time, is your green dot, whether it be green, yellow, red, depending on how far out you are, your green dot is telling you what part of your truck is high, and you need to adjust that back to the center, obviously. But wherever your green dot is, like right here, it's showing me my rear is a little bit higher than my front. Um, and I'm just a little bit higher on the driver's side than the passenger side. Relatively level, obviously I'm inside the shop, but that's, that's the biggest thing as I read that backwards. I feel like wherever that ball is should be telling me that's the low side of the truck, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyway, um, and then the other thing here is when you do select your outriggers, um, these are not your buttons. That's what these ones over here are for. So these are the ones that tell you up, down, in, out, etc. So you can select all, turn that back off. Now, this is my favorite part about the outrigger setup. You can control your outriggers with your joysticks. I didn't know. If, I don't know if you could have done that in the old one. Um, I like being able to do it. Like when we're done, I can stand there. When I'm done with the job, I can stand and talk to the customer while I'm also putting my outriggers away. I don't have to walk back to the truck or, or whatever. So to do that, you have to sync up your controls, get your control D to show up up here, and then you slide this bar here. And once that's over in the yellow, you can see right here has your diagram that tells you exactly which way to go. You have your up, your down, your in, and your out on all your outriggers. Of course, you can select on this screen which ones you're wanting to control at the time, and then just joystick it from there so it's pretty cool i like that that's like one of my favorite features i think is being able to control the outriggers with the joysticks i didn't know you could do that and like i said i don't know if it was if it, if it was possible on the old style but you can do it on the new style and it's, it's pretty sweet and I, as long as you're on the control panel it works every time i don't have any issues with the control panels um, the actual control stations driver side passenger side they have never given me an issue Truck wise, the biggest issue I have truck wise is, and I need to get a hold of Miller for this, is my boom angle gauge on the truck always reads zero, one, or two degrees. It never moves from there. It doesn't tell me. Now, luckily, there is a gauge on the side of the boom, but, you know, and that's just what I reference off of. So that's probably why I haven't really done anything about it because, like I said, it's, it's, it's up there and I can see that pretty much from everywhere. Um, but it would be nice to have it actually working, you know, being said it's supposed to be there. But like I said, I got to get a hold of Miller. That's on me. So from here, we're going to move on. I'm going to show you the remote. The remote is why we get an 8 out of 10 on the system. The remote still has some bugs. The remote still has some glitches, some things that I think are just programming deals, um, maybe a software update that my truck doesn't, hasn't gotten yet or something. Um, but it still has a few glitches. If the remote worked every time the way it's supposed to, a 10 out of 10. The system would be a 10 out of 10. Um, but we're going to move over to the remote, and I'm going to show you what everything about it, what's different about it, and what flaws that it does currently have. That may be something on me I'm doing. I'm not going to 100% put it on Miller. It's just it does it every time. So we'll see. All right, so we're over here at the, uh, with the remote. Now, the remote stores on the passenger side. There's a docking station for it on the passenger side. We're just on the driver's side because it's better light in the shop. Um, but there's a docking station for it on the, dry, on the passenger side, and it tells you on the MMO inside that um, it is or is not in the docking station. And the battery charger is over there. Now, I say battery charger because the remote is no longer rechargeable. The big blue Raptor remote, it's my baby is no longer rechargeable. It has batteries on the bottom. So, of course, I have one of them out. It's on the charger right now. The remote will operate on just one battery, and they're very easy to take out. Same thing on the charger. Slide it on the charger, put your other battery back in. 
super simple system. Always keep one on charge. And then once I move into the, where I start doing a, um, when we get into the upriding or major part of the re recovery, that's when I'll put the second battery in just to make sure I don't have to swap batteries out or nothing. I don't get nothing, no surprises. So that's the big thing on the, the new, the blue big Raptor remote. As far as I'm aware, you can still get the yellow remote. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the yellow remote, the yellow Raptor remote. Some guys were asking me about it. I just, I don't have the answers for you. That's something you just call and ask Miller about it. Um, but this is what I know. This is what I've been using. And it's the new 2024 Raptor remote. So we're gonna start here by powering this thing on. Your bottom right button right here is your power button. Then you have your winch um, starting from the bottom up. You'll have your winch speed button. You can also control your idle speed there your winch free spools button and go back to your load chart. Obviously then you have your e-stop. Biggest thing I want to tell people about the e-stop is you're going to bump it and you're going to hit it. It's not very far behind the this edge here. It's like right flush with it. So one of the biggest things is if you swing it off to your left side or maybe you swing it off to your right and you're next to something, it's going to bump into it and it kills your PTO immediately. Obviously it's what it's supposed to do. And if it doesn't press in all the way, it'll start setting off codes on the remote. And you'll see those codes right down here on this screen where your signal strength and your battery percentage are. It'll start sending off codes in there. Um, and then your remote will not work at all. And I tried, I had actually had this happen to me. That's the only reason I know about it. And I couldn't, I mean, it took me like an hour to figure it out. Luckily, I was just playing around in the yard with the truck when it happened, not out on a major job where I, you know, should have had the remote and everything. But, um, yeah, I ended up just pushing the e-stop all the way in, twisting it and resetting it, and everything went away and started working back properly. The same thing may have happened with the old remotes, I don't know. But, like I said, if you just bump it and it doesn't go in all the way, it's going to set off codes on the remote, and it's going to basically lock the remote down and make it completely unusable. So that's your buttons up off the right side. Up off the left side here, you have your, on the top, you have your beacon button. This does the same thing you set it up to do. Um, strobes all your lights, obviously. Then you have your upper work light button. You'll have your lower work light button. And then you'll have your engine diagnostics button, which basically tells you your, what your engine diagnostics are at. And you can also idle your truck up from that screen as well. Oop, wrong button. Back to the right hand side, we'll switch this back to our load chart and we'll go from there. So first things first, to sync up the remote, it is no longer on top of the uh, joysticks. It is actually the top two buttons, press them together, same time, it takes a split second and it will start. Your green light up here up top will start blinking and that's how you know that you are synced up. Now, <clears throat> your load chart screen, you can lock and unlock your house lock change your parts align. It gives you your rotational degree and your angle degree. Gives you your load, your extension, your radius, your capacity, and then you have a capacity dial here, just up here in the top, that will tell you, it, and it, it's a growing chart. It'll, it'll, as you go higher, it'll go green, yellow, red, once you're starting to get outside your capacity. Also, the other thing that I like too, is this whole, all of your lights up here will start doing the same thing. I don't know if the old remote did that or not, but this one does. Um, as you get higher in your capacity, your uh, lights will start going and then your last ones are yellow and red and it'll start screaming at you and telling you, hey, you're, you're, you're going to tip me over and you're going to cost me a lot of money. So from there, you can move into your winch free spool screen. Now you can engage and disengage the free spools from this screen. I just put them in free spool and they both will go back into uh, engaged. Now, as my understanding is you cannot engage the winches from the remote. Sorry, you cannot disengage the winches. You cannot activate free spool from the remote, from the older remotes. The new one you can. So you can activate and deactivate all of your winch free spools uh, from this remote. You can also change your winch speeds. I believe you could still do that on the other one. Um, of course, you have your main driver, main passenger, and your drag. Everything else is the same there. And then uh, I just hit the power button. This thing's probably gonna turn off. So back to our, back to our main load chart here. 
that's relatively everything about the remote. The only problems that it has, and this is my biggest, this is my eight, this is why it drops two marks. All of your winch free spools, your if you want to change your winch speeds, uh, if you want to control the next thing that I'm fixing to tell you about, you can't do it more than once. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or it just freezes up, but the, the screen does freeze up relatively often. And when I, like I said, you get a one-time use out of whatever feature you want to use on the remote. Um, if I engage my winches off the free spool and then disengage them, I can't re-engage them. I got to go back to the control station or I have to restart the remote and it'll work just fine. But like I said, it's a one-time use. But when it's working properly, it all works like it's, it all works like it's supposed to. I have zero complaints about the system. It works, I mean, it's a fantastic idea. I think there's just some software bugs that they still have to work out. But maybe they'll get it squared away by the time you get yours and you won't have these same problems I have. Um, maybe I'll get a hold of Miller and actually tell him about this problem <laughs> and, and get it fixed. So we'll see. But that's the issues that I have with it. My favorite feature of the remote is you can flip this toggle switch and you actually have the ability to work your control, uh, your outriggers from the remote as well. I don't believe you could do that on the old one, but you can select all and then it's your joystick functions that will lift up, lower, extend, and retract all of your outriggers. If you want to change that back, flip your switch back, goes right back to your load screen. And like I said, everything's working in here um, right now, but I, and it may be a cold thing. Maybe the remote just doesn't like being cold. I haven't used it. We got it in November, so I haven't used it when it's warm outside. Um, so maybe it's just like when it's cold, it kind of, the screen has a hard time keeping up and that's what keeps everything kind of working the one time and then it doesn't work again without restarting it. But uh, like, like I said, in here, everything's working as many times as I want to use it, you know. Um, I can go in here for my free spools. So it may just be a cold thing. Um, when the remote's cold, it doesn't want to work right. That could be the whole problem. Um, but like I said, that's your, that's your 2024 Raptor controls. That's your new remote. Um, that's your changes to the control station. Uh, the MMO screen inside the cab is a little bit different as well. I don't really think we need to go over it. It's self-explanatory. You guys will see it when you get it. I'll leave that a surprise for you. How about that? You guys can figure I, I'm not going to show you all the secrets to your trucks you're going to get. So, yeah, you guys can figure that out. That's a you problem, not a me problem. So, anyway, we're going to wrap this thing up. I'm going to finish sticking some new decals on this thing, get it outside so we can uh, get one of the other mini, mini projects like that thing, recovery trailer. You guys have made a lot of progress on it. Now it's my turn to stuff it full of stuff maybe get some stuff off of this because it's full so anyway thank you guys for watching like the video subscribe you gonna tap in the subscribe thing right there subscribe leave a comment like i said make sure you like it or even hey, dislike it if you don't like it nothing crazy nothing wild today uh just an informational video that a few people have asked for three Three people have asked for. So that's the end of that one. You guys have a good day. Okay, bye.